Welcome to another episode of the Spiritual Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Mary Beth, founder of Day One Life Coaching, and I am a spiritual transformation coach. And this podcast is an extension of my practice because I have the privilege of talking to thought leaders in the spiritual community, just like the one we have here today. It's Valerie Lewis is here with us today. How you doing, Val? I'm doing good. So excited to have you here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just get right into your um, your short bio here, and then we'll start our conversation. Great. Glad to be All here. Right. So you guys, meet Valerie. She's a psychic medium with a unique talent for delivering messages from spirit with a sarcastic and witty twist. With several hundred readings under her belt, Valerie has earned a reputation for her sharp wit and irreverent humor, making her clients and students feel both entertained and enlightened. I love that, by the way. She is a tarot reader, a psychic medium, and a channeler. She is also a certified life coach and an ordained minister. She's a founder of Tarot, Unicorns, and Coffee, an online community of over 1,700 members with weekly online events. And she also sits on the leadership team of Awkwardly Zen, another global spiritual community with well over 12,000 members. Wow, that's yeah. pretty cool. And speaking of coffee, this is my first decaffeinated podcast. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking coffee since I was at least 10, like probably younger. And um, I felt intuitively that I needed to quit coffee. And this is the week. And I'm over the, I, I made sure to start, you know, earlier in the week. But oh my gosh. Oh my. Detox is real. Detox from caffeine is for real. And I am glad I'm over it. I feel good now. I feel good. good. Nice, even energy instead of my. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like that anyway. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm ADHD. Um, you know, so I think the coffee was causing me like some extra of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. It started messing with my sleep. We don't mess with my sleep. So, so Val, you know, you're a psychic medium. Um, what, what exactly are your psychic abilities? Cause I know it's different for everyone. Yeah. So what are yours? Well, I'll start with my strongest. My two strongest are clairvoyance, which means I see images in my mind's eye, and clairaudience, which means I hear voice hear voices talking to me. That's so confusing, I think, in the spiritual community when I say I see things and I hear things. They, I know because I used to think that related to what media and cinema has done with with psychics, where they think I'm actually seeing something that's not there, or I'm actually hearing voices audibly that aren't there. That's not exactly how it works. It's all like in my in my mind's eye, I see things. I hear things, but it's more like a voice within my mind. It's not like an audible. Audible, you know? yeah. No, thanks for clarifying that. And I used to think the same thing too, by the way. I think we all, yeah, because you're right. It's because of movies. Yeah. And then we make assumptions. That's just how it is. And yeah, it's almost always in the mind's eye. And that's very cool. Um, So like, let's say you saw like my mom or something like you would you would you actually be able to see like how she looked or you would just see like a a woman and how does that work so it, it kind of depends on the reading it depends on what that entity on the other side is trying to communicate mm -hmm. through me so it has to relate to me or otherwise it's just going to miss me and then how it relates to the individual that I might be reading for. So for instance, I had this one reading where the mother, I think it was a grandmother on the other side, represented as, and I'll say it that way, represented as an elderly lady. It looks like she's wearing an apron and she's cooking something in the kitchen. Well, the, what mattered was that she was cooking something in the kitchen. And that was what clued the client in to let them know, oh yeah, that, that is my grandmother and we used to cook all the time and blah, blah, blah. So it's not always the, the image that spirit gives me is not always like a snapshot of what they looked like while they were here. It's often a representation of something that will relate to them and something that's in, I call it the Rolodex of my brain because it, it, I have to be able to latch onto it to understand it as well. But sometimes I do get visual representations enough if the 
if the spirit needs to convey to me what they looked like for validation reasons, then sometimes I will get an actual visual representation of what they actually may have looked like while they were here on the earth with me. Very cool. And that makes sense. You said the Rolodex of, of, of Valerie's head. Yeah. And that because if it's not something that's a symbol for you, yeah, you kind of need it to be, don't you? That makes Absolutely. a lot of sense. Yeah. And a lot of times when I'm in the middle of a reading, I can feel them. I, I say them. I can feel spirit like flipping through the Rolodex in my head because it's like they're sending me a message and I'm like, I'm not quite understanding. And they're like, well, try this one. Not quite understanding. Try this one. And that's it's just that sensation of they're looking through all of my experiences and all of my knowledge and trying to find something that not only connects them to me, but also connects me so that I can say something that makes sense to the client. So I can always notice when they're doing that because it's like, let me pause for just a minute. They're trying to make it make sense. <laughs> that is so cool. And I've never heard it explained that way before. I, I, I totally get it. That's pretty cool. So what would you say your strongest? Is it clairvoyance or clairaudience? Clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is your strongest? Very cool. Clair audience coming in second. And honestly, I've, ex I've experienced all the clairs. Um, and I think all psychics have abilities to do all of that. I think everybody's a psychic. Everybody can access it all. It's just which ones come more naturally to me, mm -hmm. the ones I hone in on, or the ones that I decide to actually intentionally practice. But I feel like we all have access to all of them. I do too. And um, it is. It's like most of us, we aren't going to know that we're psychic because a lot of people, they're just spend all these, all day, every day distracted by stuff, right? And, you know, it's, it takes, it takes tuning in. We got to tune in to yeah. the other side. And that's like one of the things that, so this, uh, this episode is called signs from spirit. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, what are some, and uh, so I guess like you just taught me, like it's going to be different, like for different people because of the Rolodex of their mind, but are there some common signs from spirit so that people who, like you said, everybody's psychic, how can someone who's lost a love, loved one, what are some common signs for them to look for? Great question. I think those who have lost loved ones who are specifically looking for those signs, um, it will be something that was memorable to them. So it might be something that they're thinking about, something that, you know, I always did this with my grandma and why all of a sudden am I seeing all these ads on my Facebook for, you know, cooking chocolate chip cookies when I never searched for that. That's kind of a sign from the universe. Like there's no other reason why this is in my life right now, except the fact that, oh, I remember chocolate chip cookies with grandma. So I feel like the other side does communicate through signs that are familiar with us, especially if it's someone who has crossed over. But then I've also found that there's some standard, and I do that very loosely, um, standard signs just because the spiritual community has said, when you see this thing, it means someone from the other side is trying to communicate with you. Mm -hmm. And so because that's a widespread, um, accepted kind of way of communicating, then our human brains, of course, we're, lo we're looking for that particular sign. So one thing is birds. Um, cardinals, I would say cardinals in general are related to messages from the other side, but that's not always true because um, I have a personal experience of someone who did not like the color red because for them, it represented Kansas City Chiefs. I'm a diehard, <laughs> fan. I'm a diehard KC Chiefs fan. Um, and their favorite team was the Dallas Cowboys. And we always went back and forth on that when, when that person was living. So when they crossed over, instead of coming back and presenting as a cardinal, because I was looking for cardinals all after they passed over, they came back as a blue jay, blue for Dallas Cowboys. Oh, funny. It, it was so hilarious. So, it, but there are those standard things. Um, what about right? pennies? I've heard pennies a lot. Have you found that's a pennies. pennies from heaven? That's so interesting because pennies have never equated to someone from the other side for me personally. Mm -hmm. I find pennies on the floor. I do hear that phrase pennies from heaven but i consider it that is that's a sign that my abundance is coming mm. because it's a penny that it's that's a sign i always what the, what i say is that the spirit the spirit realm doesn't know a, a penny from a, a million hundred dollar note so when i see a penny that's just the easiest way for them to represent hey look out abundance is on its way abundance is on its way very cool and we should give a shout out to travis holt that's, that's hey. how i found you through travis and 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 i thought of him when you said birds as a sign because i did a one-on-one -on -one session with travis and one of the and my mom came through and the first thing he said was um she's showing me hummingbirds which is her bird and actually the only thing i had next to me hanging um and 
was hummingbird and it was her hummingbird. So it was like, it was very much like, I knew he was connecting. It was the first thing he brought up and, and hummingbirds aren't necessarily everybody's favorite bird. And like, I, I literally have hummingbirds hanging in my house that were hers. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Nature, nature. Yeah. Just expanding it to say nature because a lot of things, flowers, hummingbirds, insects. My dad, my dad used to communicate with me through insects when he first crossed over. Oh, wow. We've calmed that down. I was like, nope, don't want the bugs in my no. house anymore. Oh, thank to you. <laughs> um, but yeah, anything in nature, I think the way I see it is from non, from non-physical, what is the easiest way for them to make their presence known in the physical world? Well, non-physical in nature are automatically, that's a connection that, that's, that's a bond that's never going to be broken. And that's an easy channel for them to communicate with the animals, with the birds, with, with the flowers, you know, to make those symbols come into our life to remind us that that there is someone on the other side looking out. For and us. let's make this, let's just to clarify, it's not that your mom or your dad is the cardinal, but the spirit is able to influence nature, influence nature in some way. And they're definitely, like you said earlier about social media, Oh my gosh, I've gotten so many things from social media that I know for sure are spiritual signs. They're very good with electronics, electricity in general. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, know, I know for certain, maybe not everybody, but for me, my spirit guides absolutely use AI technology to get in touch with me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, yes. I was um, typing a text about my mom one time, one time after she passed and um, I was in a mood. And it was probably something a little bit that I shouldn't have been saying um, to the other person. Literally, all of it just deleted. It backed up. I watched it back up. And I was like, okay, mom, I get it. I won't say it, you know? And I, I almost felt like I was in trouble by my mom, you know? <laughs> but I was like, that was, that was wicked. Like, I was like, okay, got it. That is so cool. I received that, that cool. sign and I didn't send it and I didn't say it. And it was perfect because it gave me a little bit of time to um, step back. You know how we just kind of react sometimes. And, 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 and yeah, so she was still, she was like, nope, that's not good to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, I do, I've, anyone who's watched my show knows I've lived in a haunted house for, uh, I, I don't now, but I did in the past for about a year. And I had so many crazy things happen that, you know, I just don't doubt any of this anymore. And I, I never really did though. I've had stuff happen since I was really little, but that definitely sealed the deal where when you have constant electricity, that's why I brought that up is elect the electrical stuff was definitely, um, what were those things called? Like I had a, is it an iPod? Like the music ones that we, we used to listen to iPods, you know, and I, I would put it on and get on my treadmill and, and um, the spirit would always put very, change the song on me and put very specific songs that were very spirit related. Like um, one of them was called How to Disappear Forever by Radiohead, which I had my boyfriend at the time, I had his music. So I didn't even know that song and it would always play that one. And it's the creepiest song you could ever imagine, you know, I, and, and the creepiest video as well. And then another one was Strawberry Fields. They always played Strawberry Fields for me. And um, it was just really crazy. And both of them have these trees in the videos because I did my research. I had to watch the videos. I'm like, why do they keep playing this? And yeah. then as media, I had mediums come over. I was trying to stay in the house, but we ended up moving ultimately. But this story was um, one of the, the, the guy, the spirit who was changing my music all the time to those two songs. He had lived there like back in the 1600s and and he had hung himself in the tree. And that's why these two videos had the trees. He was committed. And I was like, man, spirit is highly, highly, highly intelligent. Absolutely. Cause, and then they knew that I'm going to, I'm, I'm a researcher. I'm going to dig in and find out what does this mean? Why are you playing these two songs? And both songs just featured this tree through the whole video and then come to find out that. And I'm like, oh, that's the connection. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I do no, that's perfect. I was like, I'm gonna tell that story. <laughs> yeah, and that you brought up something like living in a haunted house or even getting messages from the other side that might be a little unsettling to us. And so I just wanted to say that in my experience, I don't think that the entities that are trying to communicate from the other side are trying to frighten us. A lot of people are like, well, are there good ghosts and bad ghosts? No, I don't think so. I think they don't understand from the other side what might be startling and upsetting to us as we're 
encountering it or experiencing it. And so it's not like we're at, it's not like we're at, at their, at, we're victimized by them. At any moment, we can speak out and say, hey, I don't like the way you're using those signs, or I don't like the way you're slamming my kitchen cupboard doors mm -hmm. at 3 a.m. every day. Can we communicate in a different way? Because they're just trying to get our attention in the best way that they can. A lot of times that happens during the night when we're not running around ignoring stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's, it's, it's very much a, if you don't like it, speak up and have them change how they're trying to communicate. So yeah, I needed you back then because I <laughs> was in total fear mode and it was very scary and they were scaring me. And then what I didn't know back then is that the more we put fear into it, the it, it kind of just magnifies it. And in addition, like, yeah, the, the dog, uh, we had a yellow lab at the time. This was almost, um, it was like 15 plus years ago but got, the dog was really sick and just wouldn't leave a certain room. And what I was told is there was a negative energy vortex and that uh, like that was already there and we kind of woke it up when we moved in. But um, yeah, it was, pretty, it was pretty fearful, but I didn't know that I had that kind of power. I know that now, like ask, ask the stuff to leave, but we did everything though. We tried, um, I think it was because it was so many spirits. It wasn't just one, it was so many. It was just like, we did the whole um, um, exorcism thing. Like we did, not exorcism, but you know, when you try to I just, what is it called? Uh, sending them back to the light is what I call it, but I yeah. know what you mean believe. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And just um, cleaning, clean, cleansing the house, you know, and and um, I had a priest in there and everything like we tried everything and the activity just never died down. And because I had a five year old at the time and he was being affected by it, we were just we just moved. But a lot of that was my fault because I was fearful of it at the time, fearful of what it was doing to the dog and doing to my son and my boyfriend who lived with me at the time who didn't believe in any of this stuff he wouldn't even go in that place by himself by the end of it <laughs> he's, wow. he's a believer now but yeah um yeah but i i do think you're right though that technically my fear invited more of the negativity yeah. and i could have at any time changed that but i i i was scared i'm just i'm not, I'm not gonna lie <laughs> knowing that the spirit world not necessarily just those who have crossed over but spirit in general the spirit world communicates with us in the best way that we're ready to receive at the time and if fear is a big player in our in our life mm -hmm. not to say that they are intentionally trying to scare us but if they know that fear motivates us more than happiness or joy because that's just where we are in our life and that to them Fear is not negative. Fear is just the most readily available tool that they can use to move you. And it might just be that, I, I don't know in your particular situation, but in a situation where it's like, I've tried everything and they won't stop. For me, that would be a, let me sit back and figure out what is really going on. Maybe there's a message from the other side saying, move out of this house because this house has lead paint or this house mm -hmm. is evil, or the foundation is going to crack in five years and you don't want that trouble. So maybe they're just using fear to motivate you because they have a, a better understanding of what would be a good fit for you. That's a really good point. And it worked. And you're right. That was a very negative time in my life. I had just been divorced, you know, and um, it was it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best time. And I was you know what? I was drinking a lot of alcohol and I swear like that lowers that lowered my vibration anyway. And then a lot of the it kind of um, exacerbated the fear as well. So I think that 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 alcohol could not have helped that situation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we're human. What are we gonna do? Like I ghost in my house. Yeah, I'm gonna drink. <laughs> I, that exactly. One of them kind of led to the other, and then it was a vicious cycle, you know. And yeah, yes. Thank you for that excuse. <laughs> I like it. So let's talk about uh, manifestation and law of attraction. What what is your take on that? So I um, started my spiritual journey very heavily um, following Abraham Hicks and the teaching of Abraham Hicks, which Me is too. yay, which is Esther Hicks channels an entity which has given its name as Abraham, which represents infinite intelligence. So a lot, like not a lot, all of their teachings are based upon the law of attraction and how you attract things into your life. And I thought that was the end all be all, that it's just the law of attraction. 
And I struggled with that for so long until I kind of had to sit back and ask myself, do I really believe in this? Yes. Okay. Well, well, what parts aren't fitting for you? And so I just kind of combed through it. And what I came out on the other side is that there's not a law of attraction, not in my life, not in my experience. There are laws of attraction. There's a lot of laws. (laughs) Yes. And it it depends on a whole levy of things. It's not just sit and think happy thoughts and the car and the lover and the houses are, are going to come to you. And that kind of feels to me like how the law of attraction is represented in mainstream. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just your mind, just change your mindset and you can have everything you want. It's like, yeah, but there's a lot of other things that go into changing my mindset. It's my energy set point. It's the experiences. It's the tools that I have access to, to change my mindset. It's all of these other things. It's not just as simple as think a happy thought, look in your driveway and expect a Ferrari. Mm-hmm. You know, so many more steps. So I started calling it the laws of attraction. Mm-hmm. And I also realized that a lot of times we, a lot of times as teachers, if I was to give a presentation to a hundred people and I say, these are the steps for the law of attraction, maybe five, six, seven, ten 10 of them would actually benefit because they're able to take that information, extrapolate it and apply it to their own life. But that is not the end all be all. That's that's where I feel like those type of teachings fall short because the other 80 people need that practical step of, okay, but how do I apply this to, to my life? You said think happy thoughts. And I'm like, well, let me have a conversation with you. And I find out think happy thoughts is not where they are energetically. And so they need a different step that comes before the think happy thoughts to get them to. So it's not that the think happy thoughts doesn't work, but it's like, you got to cater this and you got to, you got to create a law of attraction plan specific to where they are in their life. And right. A lot of things fall short. Yeah. And that's what, like, obviously I teach law of attraction and, and I almost feel like it has to be one-on-one because you've got to deal with, you know, like the point of attraction is kind of what you're bringing up. And I think Abraham does bring that stuff up, but it is, it's too general. And same with the secret. They, I agree, very basic. And they're, you know, as a teachers, we've learned to expand upon that. Right. And, but the point of attraction is is basically everything from that you learned from the time you were born and then the momentum that you have on a specific subject and then yeah. how, and then how you feel today. So and, and, and it doesn't even sound that complicated, but it's so freaking complicated because think about all that programming and those three things that I just said. Your point of attraction is so different than anybody else's and you can't compare. Well, well, how come Val, she manifests something so quickly and it takes me years? Well, your your point of attraction is different. And then it's also going to be different with relationships versus abundance versus health. You know, we got to like break it down. It's like it's it's so you got to really work one on one with people to really get in and, and dig into their programming, which is subconscious. By definition, they're not even aware of it. And that's why one on one is so important, you know, Um over like like you said the group like oh follow these steps how do they apply it well they don't even they're not even aware of what they're doing you know exactly. it, we could pick up on it from the outside by some of the way somebody talks and you can pick up on their programming pretty well yeah. absolutely absolutely yeah i mean it's just great starting point i don't want to dissuade anybody law of attraction though you have to have it as a starting point yeah <laughs> big events where you're just one in a in a you know in a sea of 100 other people great starting points to give you the information you need. So, yeah. Yeah. And that's why, I mean, and I still listen to Abraham Hicks um, regularly, um, but I can hear now all the things that I didn't get before. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. I'm like, Oh, I used to think I understood this, but I really didn't understand it. But yeah, yeah cause we are looking at it too basic until we really realize. And then you, and it's, it's, it's funny cause you could even hear the same exact seminar that they, you know, that you listen to, I mean, sometimes even like a couple weeks ago and you're in a different vibration and you're like, it hits you differently, right? So many times, especially with those teachings, because they are universal truths. Yes. They are those big things that you can listen to them a million different times. And every time you're going to pick up something different based upon where you are when you're listening to it. So yeah. yeah. What's your vibrational f- frequency? Yeah. And the law of vibration, you know, I, I had this, um, I have this thing, I'll send it to you after we talk, but it's like this long list of all these different laws, universal laws that I was like, what? Oh my gosh. Like it's almost no it's so complicated being a human. Good Lord. <laughs> I know. And, you know, and, and it isn't about like, 
just being happy and thinking positive thoughts all day. We actually like Abraham will say we need to use we need those emotions, all of them we for guidance and they're indicators. They're indicators of where we are. Like we don't just um, I think we even I talked to Travis about this. We the the Abraham, you don't just stick a happy face sticker over your fuel tank when it's on empty. You 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 look at it and you realize, oh, I'm on empty. I need to go fill up. Yeah. Exactly. It's an, it's an indicator. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore your feelings. Feel your feelings <laughs> and then let them tell you where do we go next? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, so that you might have kind of answered this one already. But what makes your readings different? Like if you're sitting down with a client, um, you're a life coach, too. Right. So you're a life coach, an ordained minister. Okay. And so I'm assuming like when you do life coaching, you're bringing you're pulling in your psychic abilities to the life coaching se sessions. Yeah, yes. And I will say as far as the ordained minister, um, that's more like I don't practice a, a particular uh, denomination or religion. That's mm -hmm. more for legal protection. So I just want to put that out there. But I oh. am ordained, but it's more nice. for legal protection um, because of the energy work that I do so that I can communicate with people um, on that level. But as far as the what, what makes my readings different, uh, let me go back to when I started receiving readings from others what i felt like was i would sit down with somebody i remember very clearly i think she was probably the first psychic and it was at a psychic fair and she just gave me all this information and she was like and your your grandmother's not not grandmother some ancient she was a medium to some woman in your family used to be a bush person and that's where you might be getting your psychic abilities from and and then it was like okay and now twenty dollars please and i'm like wait what <laughs> like <laughs> I understand you're giving me a lot of information, but what am I supposed to do with that information? Yeah. And so that as a psychic for me, I was like, well, I don't want to just pull a card and say, oh, looks like uh, you're having a tower moment. Okay. And this card looks like you might have trouble with money. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Good I luck with that. <laughs> yeah. I want to go the extra step to uh, help them. Like, like when I was talking about a lot of people are able to not a lot. A minority of people are able to extract that information and apply it to their own lives. But that's not a skill everybody has. So when I give a reading, I want to go the extra step. And this is how you apply this information that spirit is giving you to your life. Because spirit is always giving us information. But if we don't know how to apply it, it's not doing us any good. So that's why I try to do that extra step of, and this is how you might want to apply this information to your specific situation that you just asked me a question about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're not doing anyone's service if you're not teaching them the practical because because knowledge is kind of meaningless unless you're applying it. Wisdom right. is the application of knowledge, right? Right. right. Even, even with the clients, I, I have found that the majority of clients when I'm doing like a new client or when I'm at a psychic fair, it's almost as if they don't feel comfortable asking those questions. Like there's almost a resistance or a they feel like they can't ask deeper questions like if i say oh it looks like you might be facing something emotional and they're they're just like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm like do you have questions like i have to prompt them do you have questions about that would you like any more information should we ask your guides this is a good one should we ask your guides for any guidance on it and i do i ask their guides and so that is more important for me to not just relay the information but also here's what your guides are saying you can do about it yeah. And speaking of that, you know, we're, since this is called signs from spirit, I know that I'm guilty of this sometimes where I will ask my guides something for a sign and then I'll forget and I won't pay attention. Like you guys, we got to pay attention, right? Like <laughs> if you ask your guides for a sign, you know, keep your antennas up, <laughs> so to speak. And, and honestly, they're always sending us signs. Always, 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 always. Either it's visual, it's something in our tangible world, or it's energetic, or it's a thought or a feeling. They're always sending us signs. So when we say, please send me a sign, on the other side, what they're actually doing, it's, it, I kind of see it like a light bright. I might be dating myself, one of those light bright. Oh, um, I'm familiar. <laughs> they make the ones that are important to us light up brighter. Like they're always sending us all the signs, all the light. Mm -hmm. But they're like, okay, you're asking for a sign. Let me make these numbers show up brighter. Let me make this flower show up brighter. So yeah, it's really important that we, we're, our head, if we're asking for signs that our head's on a swivel and we're actually looking for and receiving those signs. And I think it helps to ask for something specific and to put it right in front of us. Like, you know, that's, that's like what I've noticed is, you know, that 
Well, well, let's say that somebody, who, let's say one of these viewers is looking, you know, searching for a job or something, you know, ask very specifically, like for your angelic, like, so I talk to the angels every day and um, I always invite them into my life every single day because they come by invitation. You know, we want to invite them. Um, otherwise, it's, we, we're, we got free will, so they're not going to intervene. Um, I, I think they might intervene sometimes in emergencies, but for the most part, we should invite the angels into our day. So we always want to ask for something very specific about like, I want this job. Like, what do you want? Um, please, you know, show, show me a job, you know, bring me the right people, the right time that has a job with a lot of freedom and this specific salary at least or something better I always i'm a big fan of saying or something better uh you know and just location we got to be really really specific about what we want and then ask them to put the sign right in front of us you know so we might see it you know scrolling through social media or the newspaper or something like that but but please put it right in front of me i always say so to where i can't miss it make it to where i can't miss it right <laughs> And another thing I want to mention about signs, and it's a bit of a, a paradox, I think. When we ask for signs, there are people who say, I ask for signs all the time and I never see them. I never get answers. I never see anything. And what I found is what's going on is there's a bit of a paradox. If you're, you, we are asking for a sign because we're human and we want that physical validation of I'm on the right track. Can you show me I'm on the right track? Mm -hmm. So we're asking for the sign to validate something or to affirm something in our life. And at the same time, that might mean we're not fully trusting ourselves, or we're not fully trusting the universe. So the, where, that's where the paradox comes in is you have to be at least 51% looking for and expecting and trusting that that sign will show up. Because if you're too much in the, I don't believe any of this, you're going to have to show me a sign to prove it to me. Spirit is like, I don't have to prove shit to you. You're too much in doubt and fear to see it, even if I sent it to you. Mm -hmm. so that's why some people don't see them because I feel like it's, it's a very, it's a very paradoxical situation. I'm asking because I need validation, but I have to trust that the validation is coming because if I doubt it, then it's not going to come. They're blocking their own thing. Um, and that's no, like, that, that's very much law of attraction too. It's like the very basic, basic formula, ask plus believe equals receive that believe that middle part, that's the hard part. Yeah, if I believed, what? If, yeah. one day I, signs, if I just believed that I was on the right track, right? So it is a little bit of a balancing act. Right. And then also about letting it go and having faith because, and then not asking over and over again, because when we keep asking over and over, we are literally showing the universe that we don't have faith. Because if we had the faith, we could let it go and just trust. Trust and that. Also, asking and receiving are two very different vibrations. If you're asking every day for the same thing, you are in the asking. Mm -hmm. mode, the asking energy, that's fine, but you're not going to receive anything until you switch off that and get over into the receiving. Yeah. And receiving, I think a lot of um, people, well, what's receiving mode? Receiving mode is trust, relax, yeah. chill the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. I know I can swear with you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's another thing that makes my readings unique. I yeah. swear <laughs> she swears a lot, you guys. So if you like that, like I've literally hired people because I swear, you know, like, <laughs> like those are my people. Um, yeah. We're just passionate. We're just passionate. So, um, yeah. And, and you use uh, humor a lot, too. I try. I try. My kids say I'm not funny, but I think I'm fucking hilarious. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, and, and that's to me, like when I'm thinking about. Man, if I'm getting a message like from my mom, you know, and it's sad, you know, because she hasn't, you know, she died, you know, well, it's been like three years, but still, you know, you're still sad, you know, how grief comes in waves and you want it to, you, that would make the reading so much better. Like for me personally, at least, is if there was humor and you're not just like crying the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's interesting, like humor, humor is my thing. I feel like I'm, naturally funny at least i hope i'm funny i'm hoping i'm funny um and i have found that the clients that sit with me it's all part of the divine game like they're ready to like you you're ready to hear that laugh or have that fond memory that makes that puts a smile on your face instead of brings tears to your eyes you're ready for that and spirit has met has has paired me up time and time again with clients who do enjoy my sense of humor so i do feel like that is an integral part of it i mean and it's also it's putting someone at ease if we can't laugh about our life, 
then we're we're already kind of pointed towards the wrong trajectory. We're taking shit too seriously. So yeah, it puts them at ease. It brings humor back. We're, we came here to have fun. We came here to yes, have fun. Absolutely. Yeah. And the vibration of fun and playfulness, like that's a very high vibration, you know, like I want to do that every day, you know, just being fun and like, why can't, why can't we make everything a game? That's what, <laughs> that's, yeah. how, that's how I want my life to be. I kind of live that way a little bit. Like, hmm, what can I make happen today? You know, like it's kind of like a great way to start your day. Like, because you're going to always be challenging yourself, but it's not scary challenge. It's when you make something a game, it's fun. And I really do start my days that, that way. And I love that. interesting things unfold when you do that. So let's talk about the online community that you founded, Tarot, Unicorns, and Coffee. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, that was completely way back, way back when. That was in the beginning of me stepping out to offer my services to others. And it was the way it happened. The way it happened, it happened the way it needed to happen because I don't think I would have ever been like, oh, I think I need to do this thing. Um, it was just a progression of, I was helping someone else with their group. They kind of dropped off and they didn't want to do it anymore. And I was like, oh no, I have an event coming up or several events coming up, better create my own thing. And I, I didn't even like, I didn't think beyond that. My only thought was I need to create this platform so that I can do the upcoming events that I have. And then that was like, the spirit was like, we got her, we got her now. <laughs> and, then, and the more I started creating events and welcoming people in, I was like, oh, I think I created a community here. I think that's what happened. Nice. And so that that was definitely part meant to be part of my path. And so I am very much focused on nurturing and growing and building that community. And it's a great, I love the title, of course. Now the coffee part, part makes me a little sad, but... <laughs> Oh, what are the chances too that this is the week that I that I quit like in my whole life you know I turned 50 this year and my like I I think I might have even started drinking coffee at like because my stepdad was a coffee drinker and I kind of became his coffee buddy I mean I could have been like eight or nine to be honest with you like that's how long and it was no big deal you know back back in the day <laughs> like you want, do you try coffee now or you try like the the mushroom blends coffee I am right now drinking something. I think it's called like shroom boost or something. Yeah. And it's just to have that morning ritual still. And it has like lion's mane, chaga, uh, something, maca root maybe. And then it also has B vitamins. So I still like, I feel good. You know, I feel good, but there's no zero caffeine. And yeah, some, yeah, the, the, um, it, it makes you feel alert. Sure. But it's, I can tell you, uh, honestly, I would normally get a little bit of anxiety, even though I do these all the time, like right before I started, like, and I didn't have anxiety at all today. Like I didn't. So there's, um, yeah. there's something in, in addition, my dog started waking up in the middle of the night, um, to go to the bathroom. And so every night I'm up at like three, four and to take him out. And then I, I, I stopped being able to fall back asleep for like months now. Like I'm just like wide awake and I'm like, okay, well this week, since I don't have coffee, I've gone right back to sleep every time. Nice. So it definitely was a good solid life choice. <laughs> it was a good life choice. And it's like my last vice though. So that's why I was hanging on to it. Cause I quit drinking. I'm going on five years of alcohol free. And, you know, my, got my food addiction under control, got, you know, the, the sugar. And now here I am. I'm like, oh, gosh, this was the last thing. And that's why I hung on to it, even though a channeler, a, someone who could channel like you, told me you need to get rid of coffee. That was September. So look how many months it took me to finally just because I was like, la, 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 la. <laughs> nope, not happening. Yeah. You're yeah. wrong. <laughs> even though he was right about everything else. I was like, that one, you're wrong. Mm -mm. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah. we're talking about coffee here. I would uh, Listen, if spirit ever told me, Valerie, you need to stop drinking some coffee, I'm like, no, y'all going to have to rewrite that one. No, I refuse. No. <laughs> I mean, look how many months it took me to actually process it. September till, and then what, where, what, what are we in? April? But I do like those alternatives, that mushroom blend coffee. That's, I, I've tried that before and it's really good. So, yeah. yeah. I kind of feel like the one that I bought tastes better than coffee. 
So I'm happy with it. I just, but yeah, the the detox was no lie. You guys like that was no joke. It was no joke. Um, it was, I felt like I had the flu and my muscles were achy headaches. Like I, I was really like, maybe I have a virus I'm fighting it off, but it it was a deep, I mean, hello, it's been like my whole life, you know, every more, every morning, every day, drinking a lot of caffeine. Of course, there's going to be a detoxification period. (laughs) <laughs> and, and I heard it's worse for for a lot of people worse than what I had like one to two weeks I only had three bad days three days kind of okay. like Abraham Hicks says like you know after three days it's actually out of your physical body um right. you're trying, yeah. it's yeah. mental after that it's a mental game yeah. a mind fuck we'll call it, <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So, so tell me like what's going on what's what's next for you like what what do you have going on in your life Valerie What's next for me as far as, um, so I've started trying to be more, what can I offer? I feel like I was offering, but I didn't, again, you can do things without having the right mindset. Yeah. Now my mindset is how can I serve more? And so with, with that mindset, trying to let that be my guiding force, I'm hoping to offer, um, one-on-one individual spiritual coachings very, very soon. Um, I am a, a certified Tarot life coach. Um, so I'm hoping to finally put those skills to use and to help people, um, on their individual path a little bit more intimately so that they can, like we talked about, like, there's a lot of stuff out there for everybody, but how can we narrow that down and help you? So that's, Mm -hmm. that's coming, that's in the works. And then what I'm super excited about is my very first tour. So I'm putting together my first tour. It'll be a three city tour. And um, what happens is in the morning, I'll do like a keynote address and I'll try to be funny. I hope I'm funny. <laughs> to be a little stand up comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, comedy and spirituality. And then in the afternoon portion, I'll be doing gallery readings for the group. So um, that the first one is in Lafayette, Colorado on Sunday, July 28th. Um, so that is coming up sooner. Like it, I just, I keep thinking, oh, it's off. No, it's like it's going to be here sooner than I think. So I'm really excited. Yeah, time flies. So um, is that you said that's your first one? And when did you want to talk about your other dates or? Um, the other dates are to be determined, but the to second, yeah, the second city will be Kansas City area, so which is my home base. That's where I'm located. Nice. So let me ask you um, a question I kind of ask a few of my guests. So if you could go back in time and give younger Valerie some advice, like what would that advice be if you could time travel back? Don't do it. That's what I say. <laughs> Just don't grow up. Don't go forward. No. Don't grow up. <laughs> Stop. I would tell younger me to trust in her knowing more. Mm. Um, there was a lot of things that like I the intuition. Knew. Well, no, just, just things that I knew about the world. Like I would look at the world and be like, that's not right. And I would ask teachers or my parents or the religion, the religion was a huge part of my upbringing and nobody had the answers. Well, you just have to have faith. And, and if I had not listened to that and dig, dug more into the, no, that's not right. I think that would have carried over into my adult years and served me a lot more. So I just wish I had trusted myself more as a, as a youth. That's a good answer. I relate to that. Cause I remember even being five years old, sitting in church going, Mm-mm. like, I just knew, you know, you just know that, you know, that, you know, that, you know, and I was, I, I, and same thing you ask and they tell you some bullshit answer and just brush you off and you're just a kid and you're, but you just have a knowing that, um, this isn't, this isn't truth. This is the truth. When you hear truth, you feel it, you feel it, you know, and, and it's an energy and it resonates with you. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that. That's a good answer. So if you wrote an autobiography about yourself, what would you title it? <laughs> so funny because I'm in the process of beginning a book. So, oh, nice. Yeah. You didn't know I was going to ask you this one. No, I don't. I did, I've, I've got a working title, which is the same title as my tour, which is Valerie explains life, the universe and everything. So yeah. I, I would say that's a working title. I, I think it would be something along the lines of that or got to put a curse word in there somewhere. I don't know. Um, yeah. But yeah. But more if, if it was an auto autobiography, I think that's what it would be. Valerie explains life, the universe and everything from my perspective, looking at life. Yeah. Yeah. I think mine would have a, a curse word in it as well. <laughs> <laughs> be like 
how, how I, how to get your shit together, you know, <laughs> something like that. Like, cause my whole life has been just that, you know, just doing everything wrong and then to doing everything the right way and then helping other people. I feel like that you're the same way. Like once we figure something out, we almost feel obligated to serve others. Like you said earlier, and that intention is that that intention's all you need really. And the right mm -hmm. people find you the right time. Right abundance follows when you have the right intentions like your your intention shouldn't be oh i'm out here to make money and you know it's got to be serving others i think yeah so do you have a favorite book or um quotation that you would like to share with the viewers something well, you recommend a favorite book i would not say i have a favorite book at this current moment um several books, but not a favorite at this moment. Let me think a favorite quote. I, the only quote that's coming to me at this time, which is kind of unrelated to anything else that's going on in it's my okay. life. But I love the um, one conscious breath in and one conscious breath out is the meditation. I really love that quote because for me, that reminds me that when I don't have time to do all the things, I don't have 15 minutes to meditate. I know when they say you don't have 15 minutes, you should take 30. But sometimes I just yeah. don't remind myself that just pausing is enough. Just pausing and giving yourself that space, whether it's the space between stimulus and response. That's another one I like, Viktor Frankl, um, or just space to just breathe and be for just a moment. That has really served me. So I really yeah. Like I tell people that all the time. And even like, like if, if you're just being in the present moment with your coffee, you know, just being there, like just oh, yes. instead of thinking about the next thing you have to do or something you did stupid yesterday, you know, just being there with your coffee and just like, mm, this really tastes good. You know, just being in that present moment and enjoying it because most of the time, you know, like, like I'm definitely guilty of drinking that cup of coffee and like, where did it go? I don't even remember drinking it. I was outside of my body most of the time. <laughs> <Do that. laughs> so that's good. Well, where can people, I'm going to, oh, by the way, to the viewers, I'm going to have all of Val's information. It's going to be, if you're watching on YouTube, it's going to be in the show notes. You're going to be able to find all of her links uh, to get a hold of her. And on Facebook, it's all of her links will be there too. Anywhere you can find the links, just look for them. <laughs> Hopefully you're watching this on, actually the full video is going to be on YouTube. So you will see Every, any way to get a hold of her. Are you taking clients right now, Val? I am, yes. Okay, perfect. So that's how you can reach her is, is look for these links. But how would you like people to um, find you, Val? Is there a specific, a, a one way better than another? Or yeah, The easiest way to find me and all of my stuff is going to be my website, which is tarotunicornscoffee.com. Um, and on that website, you'll find links to all of the other things I'm doing, like my meetup group and scheduling appointments with me. So yeah. Perfect. Well, I love it. It's been so wonderful talking to you today, Val. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having it's me. So this fun. Amazing. Thank you. And to anyone watching this, uh, if, if you're interested in sp the spirituality, if you like people who can channel and they're psychic, some, some form of spiritual gifts, that's what my transformation podcast is all about. So go ahead and hit subscribe. If you love this episode as much as I do, go ahead and share it with a friend. And we appreciate you watching and we will see everyone next week. Yes. Bye everyone.